Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have the DMM Check Plus Revision 8, which is the latest. I have been a very long user, I think almost three years now, of the Revision 6. And it is a great tool to verify your multimeter. And they improved it. And that is the Revision 8. It looks great. I want to take you through all the things you can do with it and also a little bit comparison with uh, some of the other standards uh, I have like these uh, process calibrators and I have all these little AD584s I think. I think this is an LM399 and we're just gonna see what is the difference and why I am still a happy user after all these years. If you are a long time viewer of my channel, you probably have seen these. These are uh, the AV584. It is nice voltage reference and uh, it is sort of uh, calibrated, verified. And uh, it's 10 volts, 7.5 and 2.5. Sometimes they even add some few resistors. So you can verify your multimeter. Later I found out that actually this one was even better. This is an HK, it's more stable. And I was actually surprised that the values that I write down here were actually correct. But this is mostly voltage. Then I also had this box. This is an LCR. It contains a resistor, a coil and a capacitor. And I also wrote down the values on it, which were also sort of okay. Then for resistors, I had board like this. These were, I think, 1%. And here also we have a few resistors and capacitors to do your testing. Then I think I showed this board. I think it was based on the AZ431, which is, I think was a Saner. And usually they use it for precision current. But uh, here they built a system that you have also different voltages out of it. Well, voltage wise, we only have DC and well, for all the others, we just need to hope that the values that they gave us are correct. Instead of using all these things, we have the DMM Check Plus. I've been using it for three years. You find it almost in any multimeter video I have if I just do some verification if the meter is good. And the reason is that it is all calibrated and it comes with the calibration sheet. It is very versatile. You have DC voltage, AC voltage, current, AC, DC. We have here the coils we have here the capacitors we have here resistors and it is all calibrated by dmm check plus so you receive a very nice calibration sheet the reference by the way is based on a buried scener it's the lt1021 and the resistors and the capacitors they use, they are uh, AAC Q200, which means it is uh, for the automotive industry. And they are less uh, sensitive for uh, moisture or temperature changes. And uh, well, here we have the resistors, 0.1%. The voltage reference itself is 0.007%, which is pretty cool. The current we have 0.1%. The 5 volt RMS is 0.1%, AC 0.5, and the frequency even 0.02%. And they all did this compared to very high also calibrated equipment. And you get your calibration list. And this is actually for this device because you have your serial number here, which match, of course, with the serial number here. If we have a closer look at the voltage reference, that is the buried scener here, they uh, cut out something from the PCB just to make it more floating so it is less sensitive for temperature changes. But the thing is, it is sensitive for static electricity and you can break it. So this open design worked great. I used it for three years and I haven't broken it yet. And well, we see all the connectors here, somewhere in between. The LCR board that I have here was an, was an add-on. Usually it only comes with the resistors and the voltage and the current. And I bought this LC board. So when you want to use it, you just click. And you can measure on the multimeter. Or if you want to do your caps, you do here. But you see, you need to go a little bit underneath the plastic glass here. 
or you measure the voltage right there and it works fine but they thought themselves there was room for improvement the open design worked great but of course the scener if i would touch it or there comes a little bit of uh, air blowing you can see already that the values change To have the reference working properly, you have to have it switched on for at least 20-30 minutes and then it becomes more and more stable. You receive the device already uh, at least 250 hours burned in because after that the scene really starts to settle. And uh, this one came with 500 hours almost, but I've been using it now for uh, 3 years so it is pretty stable. This one can only run on batteries and it would be even better if you leave it switched on all the time. So they thought about this in Revision 8. So that was very quickly the Revision 6. Have a look at the improvement of the Revision 8. Here it is, the Revision 8. Look at that. All in a closed box. Very nice with fit. You have the specifications which are by the way the same as the Revision 6. Uh, but I just printed here also. You can see this one is from uh, Wailectron. It came from Europe, so the shipping is a bit more faster. This one has the LCR as a default. This is just the version 8. It has everything already. So we have the voltage AC DC, current AC DC. We have our capacitors right there, uh, our coils, and the resistors. Also, the resistor 0.1%, this automotive grade, high quality. You can measure here the battery voltage, and we need to make sure it doesn't go below 7.8. These batteries are new, so we are good. Uh, this burn-in time is almost 2500 hours, so this one is rock solid stable. This scene is uh, stabilized for sure. What did they do? Now, also external power DC. So now you can run it really 24 seven and you can use it immediately when you want. Also with this one, of course, you get your calibration sheet. You see exactly when it was calibrated, uh, how many hours was the burn in. You see now also nicely the temperature, not only in Fahrenheit, but also here in Celsius, the voltage that they measured. They adjusted it exactly at the five volt with uh, four digit. The AC voltage here also, this is a true RMS. They use a square wave, exactly 50% duty cycle. And uh, if your meter doesn't have true RMS, it will show up as 5.5 or 5.6, just a little bit more. Uh, but if your meter does true RMS, you will see nicely this value. We have here the milliamps, DC and AC frequency. Uh, the standard is uh, 100 hertz and 10k. The duty cycle here very close to 50%. And the resistors actually from this board here. These are the values that they have read with. A key side meter here, the 3458. I think that's an 8.5 millimeter. Well, let me do a quick test with the Keatley to see if it is within all these values. So I quickly did a few tests, but the point is that am I testing now my own multimeter or am I verifying the DMN check plus? But the values are so super close. Here they have a 5.0000. Here I have 4.99967, which is pretty close. Uh, the AC, I should have 4.999. I have here 4.99906, which is put on the current here. They have a one with four zeros. I have here a one with four zeros and a six. And for AC, they only did with three digits, but I actually have four here. The resistors, the 100 ohm should be a little bit above. It is the 1K. It is. This one is a little bit below 9986, 99945. We have here the 100K, which is 100.0, 100.0, look how close that is. Well, and why is this voltage not exactly 6? 
Well, the temperature here is not 21 or 23 degrees. It's even close to 27. But also, we have here the 0.007%, which means it can be in between these. And it actually is... We are now looking at the DC 1 milliamp. Well, I would say this is DC 1 milliamp. And then you may be asked, well, you also use these process calibrators. Why not use that one? They are cheaper. Well, they are indeed cheaper, but you also get less. These are not designed for multimeter verification, but you can do because the specification, they all matched. And with those uh, accuracies, you can do three and a half uh, digit multimeters. And with the DMM check plus, you could do uh, also four and a half. But when we have a closer look at the voltage that come out of these, what you are about to see is maybe a little bit disturbing, but it, in the end it is actually not, because these devices were not designed for it. What we are doing now, we're doing tests way above their specifications. So it doesn't mean this device is bad, it just means we are testing above the specification. Let's start with this uh, process calibrator. And when I switch the output on, we can see here a reading at about 5 volt. This can maybe be calibrated a little bit better. But the main point is, if we look at the numbers here, it goes up and it goes down. And it goes up and it goes down. So if you want to verify your multimeter with this, you are not really sure if your multimeter is unstable. Well, in this case, I'm pretty sure it is the process calibrator. Let's have a look in the graphics then. So if we look at it in graphics, it looks like this. It is going up and it's going down. It's trying to correct itself. Of course, the battery is slowly going down. And then it tries to correct itself and it goes up again. But this is not perfect if you want to adjust your multimeter. Then let's have an, a look at another one that I have here, the LBO2. I've set this one also to 5 volt. And what we can see, it is a little bit more quiet, but still. It is also jumping. Let's see what that looks like. This one surprisingly looks a lot more stable. But let me now put the DMM check plus. As you can see, it is a much, much, much flatter. And I will try to do the same on the Kidly because we had a much better view. Okay, let me get this one. It is again going up and down, up and down. Let me see if I can. Okay, what I did now is zoom in a lot on the measurements that the multimeter is doing. I think I switched off most uh, of the filters and here we can actually see it is slowly going down, it's correcting itself and then so on. Let's now do the LBO2. We can see already that this signal is a lot more stable. So it's not only the readout of the voltage that you see, but also how clean the signal is that comes from it. So let me zoom a bit more. So you can clearly see the difference between this and this. And if you think this is clean, look what comes from the DMM check plus. I will change again. These are my pins of the DMM check plus. Look, and maybe if you don't see too much difference, let me zoom in a bit more. Even more. Look at that. How clean is that signal? Let's go back to the first one because we are very zoomed in. And then we go to the yellow one. That is the difference between 
the DMM check plus. Uh, very good the LBO2A, very good process calibrator or the cheaper process calibrators. That is the difference in signal. We saw that it looks a little bit noisy, but the good thing is it keeps correcting itself, which is actually quite nice. So that makes sure that the voltage doesn't drop completely like it would do with the battery that slowly goes down. And this signal from the LBO2 in. So the LBO2 is clearly a little bit better than the other and the signal is just cleaner and it keeps its voltage more or less good. Now let's go back to the DMM check plus. So even it is pretty good. This number is jumping but it is pretty pretty good actually and the signal is clean. Let's go to this one. Bang. Now it's only that last digit. Oh, and we saw already it's very, very clean. This is actually pretty impressive that they were able to do this because I will check later a battery and then you can see that the battery is not stable at all. Let's put some uh, cooling, cooling around it. You see it affects a little, little bit, but you saw with the open one, it immediately jumped. And this one is already correcting itself now. So just for fun, let's try a, a simple battery. See how stable that is. If you think a battery is the most stable source. Maybe you think it's not fair. This battery is almost empty. Let me get another one. Clearly this is more full. Look at this. So clearly it is very stable on the power supply, but what if we run it on batteries? Is it just as good or will we see the same effect as we saw with the battery? And what about the old one after three years? Well, that is here, my three year old uh, meter. And is it just as clean as the new one? Well, I don't see any difference. If you look at the zoom, it is just as stable, but of course it is the same reference scene. And if you think this is a promotional video, it is not. I bought the device myself just because I was already crazy about the Revision 6. I wanted also the Revision 8. And I'm amazed how they were able to make a good product even better. And that they enclosed it was a great idea. Also, you don't have now the problem of static electricity. And everything is now easily accessible from the outside with your little crocodiles. You don't need to go in between the plastic that was uh, needed with the old design. If you live in Europe and you would like to have one, Waylectron is doing a promotion together with my channel and you get a 5% discount. If you live in the US where the DMM check is made, I also work with them to try to get a promotion. So if and when it will appear in the video description or in the community tab. So keep an eye. So that was it. This is why the DMM Check Plus is my favorite verification tool. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.